Hey, it is Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of... Woke Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 179th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week, in honor of Black History Month, woohoo, we are talking about 10 things you should know about Black history. But before we dive deep there, a couple of questions to ask you. One, have you downloaded this episode on WokenFree.com through the Podbean app? If you haven't, please do so. That's the greatest way to show support. And it's the eight, that's how you're able to join the conversation. So we want to hear from you. We want to hear if any of the things that we talk about in this episode was new to you, if you already knew it, if you were surprised, shocked, dismayed, <laughs> any of that good jazz. So please make sure you do that. If you can't download any apps for whatever the reason is on whatever device you're listening to podcasts on, then please make sure you're subscribed and follow to the show on whichever platform you're listening on. So we are on iTunes. We're on TuneIn. We are in Stitcher. We are on, uh, we have a YouTube channel. We are on SoundCloud. We have, we're on iHeartRadio. We're on Pandora, Spotify. I mean, we're everywhere, guys. So just go to the listen tab on welcomefree.com and then you can see all the different places that we're at where you can follow and subscribe there. Now, also what's really cool is you can subscribe to the show via email by going to wokenfree.com and just filling out that like entry there. And then you'll get notification every single week for every new episode. And guess what's cool about that? You can like press forward and send those emails out to your friends and family. So uh, that's a win. Awesome. Nice. And it, exactly. And then when it comes to social media, feel free to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, yes, TikTok, and Pinterest at Woken Free. And we put out some fun content, guys, spend time and energy doing that. So please always feel free to engage with us, engage with us there. And then lastly, if you have some time during the day, like, or at night, you know, no discrimination there, uh, feel free to review the show. The more reviews we get, the broader our audience can get. And also, we just can understand kind of how the show's feeding into you and your life. And that's really important to us. So please make sure you do that. And with that, I have to give the table to you, sir. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> before we start the conversation, we'd like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the episode. And last time we shared, would you rather drink water from a glacier or a running spring. This week we're asking, would you rather give up watching movies for the rest of your life or never ever read another book? Oh, wow. That's a really hard question because I both love books and I both love film. So hmm, I think ultimately I would have to, even though I really love reading, I can't give up movies because I just really love some of the scenes that like certain movies I've watched in my life have help form the person I am today. And I just, I couldn't imagine not like watching Steel Magnolias or Black Panther or, or Creed or uh, Fruitville Station, or you see the, you see the Michael B. Jordan thing there. Wow. (laughs) I love you, Michael B. Jordan. (laughs) And also True Lies or like, there's so many films that I've watched over my lifetime. I, I couldn't, ever say no more movies that's just too sad even though it would be sad to stop reading but you know thankfully books do get turned into movies so i still would have it there and yeah. you <laughs> so you're not you which aren't you giving up then? I, I can't give up the film so i guess the other one then. all right so then the the books are gone yeah wow i know it's even really though hard. you like watching you like watching those same movies so much that you can't give them up that's yeah funny. like i just i can't i i have to be able to watch film Okay. For me, it's an easy choice. I would give up the movies because the books are often more detailed and thoughtful than their movie counterparts. I guess you, you know how people say that the yeah. book is better than the movie. So that, that's why I'm, I'd uh, give them up but don't, in a you, heartbeat. You guess you and I don't, have... and I don't watch movies. Mul- I mean, I don't do that anymore. I used to do that when I was a child, but I don't watch movies Thanks multiple for the times. Shade. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, I'm just saying when I was a child, I watched it multiple times. So what are you suggesting when adults do that? <laughs> 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 that they're, you it's they're obsessed. Like in nature? No, I'm just saying they have an obsessive nature. Why are you so obsessed with Yeah, me? like that. Oh. That's what I want to know. Nice. <laughs> but that, that's the thing. With the books, I mean, I I've, I read some books multiple times, so it's not a yes. it's not a problem. And then guess what? With the books, you can 
You can have so many of them that's compared true. to the movies. That's true. I yeah. mean, the movies is a bit harder because you definitely have to have like power and electricity to watch it. To <laughs> see the books, technically, you can read them. So this anywhere. question was framed for the apocalypse, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> now you're going down this. I mean, it, question about electricity but, and power. <laughs> but you know, it does. It does take something to watch the movies. But the movies are movies are f- uh, like a full blown experience compared yes. to the books. So it is. It's not an easy question. That's definitely true. It is really. True. That's a really hard question. But it, it's only. It makes. It e- the only thing that makes it easy for me is that there's so many bad movies put out. So ouch, <laughs> that's ouch. how I could actually give it up because I'm not missing much. So you're just not holding back at all. No, I'm saying I'm not missing <laughs> much by giving it up. That's why. Because <laughs> now it's kind of like if I gave it up, like maybe pre 2000 era, that's harder because there were some good movies. But you you know there's. Uh, you're, I'm not even. A but I'm not. The shade. You're it's it's a good way I'm putting it though because I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. But somebody knows that they've made. His, some bad movie decisions. Keep it moving, Khalil. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't say any specifics, though. That's the thing. Gotcha. <laughs> we could all figure that out, though. Mm, mm, Just mm. go to Rotten Tomatoes. There Oof. you go. Okay. That'll help you figure out kind of things. Mm-hmm. But we're going to start off February with this special episode of mm-hmm. Five Things You Should Know About Black History. Well, we each do five things. So in total, yeah, we're talking about ten. But Technically ten. Yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah. I'll do five and you'll do five. And <laughs> that's that's a good point. We'll yeah. Five times two <laughs> things you should learn about black history. <laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I went to revolt.tv, which we've uh, I, re- I think we've shouted them out before on the episode. And so I liked some of these facts because they, again, uh, were even if, the, even if I've read this before, I didn't remember it. And so I was like, I don't know if everyone else would know this. So here are some things, five things to know about black history from my perspective, shared via revolt.tv. Countries like the UK and the Netherlands celebrate Black History Month in October. So that's interesting. So they do it later in the year. Next, one of the most prominent doctors of his time, Dr. Charles Drew, created the first major blood banks, blood plasma programs, and blood mobiles. So that's really cool. I didn't know that a, a, like a black doctor did that and helped yeah. progress that in medicine there. Next, Elijah McCoy is regarded as one of the most prominent black inventors ever. He's credited for inventing over 50 devices in his career, including a lubricating cup, which automatically dripped oil when needed. Very interesting. Nice. Didn't know about that. Med- mathematician and scientist Benjamin Benaker, or Benaker, Benaker. Benaker is credited for designing the layout of Washington, D.C., which is super cool. Oh, I've heard of all these. That's like Chocolate City. Yeah, see, I didn't know about Yeah, I've heard of this. these, these three so okay. far, actually. This four, yeah. Okay, then the last one is the dance form of stepping, which I love, originated in Africa. The African gumboot dance is credited as being stepping's biggest influence. Didn't know that. Did not uh, know. I mean, that makes I sense to me. I never heard of gumboot. Yeah, but that's super cool. So those are five things. What are your five? I didn't know UK celebrated Black History Month. So that... Yeah, Black History is not just an American holiday. Yeah. Okay. My five things actually just come down to some lesser known men and women mm-hmm. that contributed to Black History in America. And this comes from biography.com. One was this Mary Ellen Pleasant. She was an entrepreneur and activist that started off as an indentured servant. She invested her money and soon amassed like a startling personal fortune based on stocks, real estate, and a series of businesses that included laundries and food establishments. And she was estimated to be worth $30 million. That's she incredible. Was, she was a real baller. Never heard of her. Wow. Okay. Bessie Coleman. I, I've heard of her actually. Yes. And mm-hmm. not, I, I guess, you know, some kids might not know of her, but she was like a pioneer aviatrix and was born to a large family of 13 children. She first worked as a laundress to save money to attend college, but ultimately ran out after one semester. She then was able to train with some of the best pilots in Europe and was the first black woman to fly. Nicknamed Queen Bess, Coleman was known for her daredevil aerial tricks. That's incredible! Wow. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't Never know she did like that. tricks and yeah, stuff. That's super I, cool. I just thought she flew like across and the seas. Like, like trained a non-traditional way. That's super cool. Yeah, she was able to like hook up with the. She she was able to mm-hmm. get that connection with the yeah, those other pilots. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> not nah, she did to go to like school for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Jesse Leroy Brown was a Navy pilot. And he was raised in different parts of the Mississippi. Brown was a determined young person and he excelled in his schoolwork. Graduating from his high school with honors, he completed three phases of naval officer training in Illinois, Iowa, and Florida, including advanced flight training. Soon he was he, soon he was skilled at flying fighter aircraft. He received his naval aviator badge and became a naval officer. 
which made him a symbol of black achievement in black and white publications. Beautiful. So he got respect, you know, from both of those Beautiful. things. Matthew Henson was an, I think I've heard of him actually. Yes. Mm. I didn't know the, I didn't remember the story, these specifics, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's an Arctic explorer that lived with his uncle until 11. Then he went out to explore the world, including China, Europe, North Africa, learning to read and write while aboard a ship. Wow. He later became a surveyor and learned to communicate with Eskimos in order to reach the North Pole. He was actually the first person to reach the North Pole, which made the leader of the expedition resent him. He eventually did get the recognition as co-founder of the North Pole before he died. Co-founder, even yeah. though he was the one who did it. Nice. Yeah, and he was the only Classic. one in the expedition that could actually speak to the Eskimos. Nobody else knew wow. the language. That's really unfortunate. So without without him, they, they would never the made it. Because yeah. the Eskimos had to help them get there, and he is the only one who that's said, "I'll communicate with them." Good. For, that's yeah. Good to know so he, you know, he's the actual. Yeah, he's founder. the founder. He, yeah, he yeah. got there first. Okay. William H. Hasty, a lawyer and judge, was born to a government clerk and a teacher. He enrolled in Howard University School of Law, going to on to have an exceptional academic career and passing the bar exam. He was one of the first African Americans appointed by the administration, serving as a lawyer with the Department of the Interior. He was the first African American to be a federal judge, and he also was the first African American to be a governor in history. He almost was nominated to Supreme Court Justice, but wow. he just like missed that. But that's people incredible. did expect him to to do that. But yeah, I yeah, never I didn't knew about, about that. Him in law school, so that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> okay, well, guys, that was a lot of history coming at you all at once. How wonderful is that? Uh, please share again your comments, your thoughts with us because we too want to know if you have other unknown Black history. Uh, tidbits of facts and or how you felt about these uh, facts that we shared with you here we go yo here we go yo so what so what so what is the scenario it is scenario time guys scenario one herman said the most significant achievements in american history were only accomplished by whites he says that this is the honest truth and we all learned about those people in history class is he correct in his assumption Mm, wow, that would be really tragic if someone felt that way. But I totally people do, do feel, feel this, this way, way. and yeah. this is based on true story. Okay, so <laughs> I would say you know, a thank you, Herman, for sharing your thoughts. However, I do think you're sadly mistaken, and uh, and because for it depends on how you come from it, right? Most significant. So what is that's a very subjective type of terminology that's used. So in his mind, maybe that is true, but objectively, that could not be verified because the I, I would say if you look at the amount of accomplishments done by people of color around the world, some people could deem that as more significant or yeah, more significant. Yeah, well, if you go for that. So I would say But now that, you said around the world. Remember, this is American history. Or even so we're focusing. America. We're fo- oh, so first we're focusing. Yeah, yeah, you could. I would still beg to say hey, that that is not... I, I couldn't agree with that statement. And I would say that, to be honest, it's not even appropriate. I think it, it seems that Herman would need to do a little bit more uh, understanding of history because what we were taught in school was not the total breadth of history, nor was it even always factually true. So I, I would encourage him... To, I would probably look up some resources that demonstrated uh, people of color achievements in America and get him to hopefully read that or review that and then maybe see if he you know changed his mind after going through that content. Yeah, the, the key was what you said at the end of your sentence and that <laughs> history doesn't teach us everything that actually happened. Yeah, it's just what they want us to what the specific Who historians wanted, want whatever, us to know. Yeah. History is very biased. That's the Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So it's history, history can proclaim this was an inventor of something when in fact yeah. it was someone else, right? Yeah. So that, that's, I think the biggest misnomer is that people, they, you know, they take history class and they're like, all right, they take it at the face value and whatever yeah. this historian said, you know, that's correct. And historians aren't mis, they don't make mistakes. They did their research. They're correct. But the truth is, the matter is, we find out is that these inventors often had help, and sometimes the ins- the assistants were actually in the vent- the inventors. Mm. Just as even I mentioned that the man from before, yeah. the Arctic explorer, who actually found the North Pole and Shameful. didn't get the credit, Shameful. and he became co-founder, right? Shameful. That's, and <laughs> See then, how that, and that is. That goes down in the history books, even yeah. though that that is actually false information. Yeah, it is false, but historians yeah. would still not the, just list him as a co-founder, maybe. Wow. But that's that, that's, so that, that's the problem I think with our history is that it's skewed and they need to like tell you that when they teach, they should tell you, you know, these historians were biased and 
even though they're we're giving this credit as this is the inventor of something, yeah. we actually don't know for sure. This Absolutely. is just according to some one per, like a couple of people's agreement. Mm-hmm. So people just but agreed on this, but it's not though, like yeah. it, to call it a fact is kind of like I don't know. It's, well, what is it's, a fact? It's right? Like it's it's it's, it's interesting. <laughs> but can we all? But some. But there are some facts that we all agree on. Like we can all agree that we breathe air, right? Yes, I think. That see how see how I some things are easy fact. facts. Yeah. But to say you know this person found america or something mm. that's not a fact oh my that doesn't make oh any sense my. right oh yes we are not taking down that <laughs> yeah it's like that because people would call that a significant achievement columbus oh my. so that's that's one of the achievements that they would consider mm. a white achievement that's yeah. the kind of thing herman would talk about you know some yeah, or you know the, the founder of electricity yeah. who really you can't found something when a group of people are living there yeah <laughs> that doesn't make sense yeah so, so that's <laughs> i know it's messed up <laughs> I found your home. Yeah, yeah I mean, you that's lunatic. great. <laughs> well, it's always been here, yeah, just because you found we've it. We've been just... living here, so you remember, it's like it. it's it's like when when your children, if they go in your your pantry, and, yeah, and they be like, oh, you know, I I found the ingredients you made you you used to make food, and yeah. it's like. Yeah, but I've always known it was there, yeah, right? I, I didn't think I made food. I bought it there, put it there. Are you, <laughs> yeah, that's... just you found it for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's just for you. That's you a didn't personal. Find it objectively, no. <laughs> that's a personal thing, right? That's <laughs> this is a personal matter, guys. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't affect me in any way. <laughs> I know where my stuff is. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so that that's it's just like that. It's uh, that's that's a good child. That's oh, nice. Gosh. You think that something one. something new happened? Okay, <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, so that's what I think because. Herman's not alone in this mindset. He definitely That's isn't. Shameful. I know you might think it's this is a, a fringe idea, That's but it's I, it's definitely not a fringe idea. There's a lot of people that believe this. Pray for people. <laughs> I'm gonna pray for y'all. History's <laughs> tough like that because history's taught along all the other subjects, and it's taught as actual mm. facts. You know, yeah. <laughs> not as you know. This is how people feel. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what it is. You're now listening to Woke and Free. 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 A podcast that gets real and honest. Scenario number two. Lydia wishes Black History Month would go away because she thinks Black History should be celebrated all year long. Do you think it would be a good idea to eliminate Black History Month? Uh, no, I think that we don't need anything taken away from our community. I think what we should mark it as is the like the inaugural uh, kickoff of Black uh, History uh, celebration, and you can and we can start it in January <laughs> if we like. But I don't think anything should be taken off the table. I think what we could say is we're kicking it off in January and we're celebrating all year long, and that would be totally <laughs> fine. But... That could be, yeah. I mean, technically, I'm okay. I don't, with I don't, that. I don't like the idea of reduction of anything. I think <laughs> that's too. Okay. It's too extreme, guys. But we can definitely kick this off in January, though. Sure. All right. That's a that's a good suggestion for our interest then. Instead of eliminating it, yeah. just starting it early. We just kick it off. Yeah. How about you? Okay. Yeah, this is an interesting thing because there was a famous, well, I guess still, I'm not going to throw the person under the bus, but the, mm-hmm. the, there was an actor that said we should eliminate Black History Month. And Was this person an African-American? Yeah. Oh. And it and it's a like a well known one. That's all I'll say. You could you could search it. You'll find it. Like and that, that's a task for our woke free readers. Their reasoning was they wanted to celebrate it all year long. Yeah, they're they're okay. like, our why should our achievements be reduced to just one month when it's something that can be and done all year long? Enough taking away. I know that's what's <laughs> funny because it's kind of like, all right, let's spread it out. But you know what actually happens? Then we just don't do it yeah, at all. Yeah, <laughs> because it's like we could also celebrate other things all year long. Yeah, that it's happen, like so, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, can we just at least start something and have something? But like, we just. This is less like a focus month where we put it at the forefront of yeah. our minds like that. You know, we've done stuff. We're not. Let's celebrate the black <laughs> Let's give some credit in America credit and across due. the world. Like, to be honest, I think, oh, you it, think should it should be. Oh, should be across the world. I think it should oh, wow. be a global But that would be too many achievements to go over in a oh, month. Oh, yeah. Then. I know. Too much things to celebrate. Here. No, but it, I, no, I really think you couldn't do it because you can't condense all that into one month. And that's why you would do it year long. Yeah, you could do <laughs> You can do like Black World History. Like, what year would be long, kind of cool would be Black but, History Week, and then you did it every month. Like, that would be kind of fun. Like, if we had like a week. So now you have twelve weeks. Yeah, of it. yeah. Now I think that would be kind of fun because we could sell it because you know MLK Day is in January, so yeah. like we could kick it off that week, starting and then every week there's a week of a designated week of Black History where we talk about it and share content every single month. I think it'd be really exciting, actually. But would you still keep the month of Black History? Yes. 
Oh, okay. So you're just adding on a couple more, <laughs> some more weeks. Yes, then. we do a full month in February, but we start. We then kick every it other off. month gets yes, oh, a, week. a week at least. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> you, I know you'd upset some people. With yes, that I one. would. But the reason is, as to your point, is because we would be going global. So this then is too much. We have that's a it's lot a of lot. content to spread around. <laughs> yeah, all the achievements in Africa, all the achievements everywhere in Europe, and like yes. So we have to spread it out if across you go, the year. Yeah, if you go back through the ages, I think I mean, it'd be fabulous. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff there. Yes, there's a lot of stuff that I don't people know. People are gonna be about surprised. And who really who love. who was the first martial artist? I mean, Woo! get it. People don't want to talk Black about Sarah, that. Yeah, didn't know about that as a kid. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scenario three: Florence thinks having a month to celebrate just Black History is inconsiderate towards other races. She would like every month to celebrate a different race. Is this a practical idea? So I think what we have to understand in this world uh, and in America is that the celebration and or attention to one matter is not the reduction of attention to other things. It's just uh, attention spent one way, but it does not mean it is the attack or the diminishing of others. And we have to really wrap our minds around that because I think that it's the same way when people say, and we get this on our social media content as well, that like black lives matter. Oh, wait a minute. White lives matter. Cool. Or all lives matter. Okay. Or police lives matter. Yes. So do all lives matter? A hundred percent. But are all lives consistently in danger every single day? No, that is not the case. But currently, you know what group is? Black people. (laughs) Black lives are actually- At a disproportionate rate. Yes. Are currently at disproportionately at risk on a daily basis. That is why the movement exists. It is not to say that all lives don't matter. Of course, all lives matter. We're all human beings deserve respect, liberty, and dignity. Of course, but we have to focus attention when there are marginalized communities at risk on a daily basis. So when we celebrate Black History Month, it is not to say that all the other races are not significant. Of course they are. However, can we take time and attention to celebrate, especially since, as we know, our history even has undone and and has lied about the Black achievements. And, yep. and so, like... It is, it is barely even a true celebration because some of the facts that are shared aren't even true and are it's, uh, skewed. It's skewed. So it's like, you know, we can't even and have we miss out on some of our history. Celebration. Actually. Yeah. yeah but, we don't know some of our actual accomplishments. <laughs> and also people f- forget contextually in America, most black people don't even un- have a, a tie to their culture, right? Because we are broken off, right? Because of the African slave trade, <laughs> we That's don't actually point. know our true history. So what we can celebrate is at least the community of black people that were here because we can't even go back like if you are German you can go back and look at your German heritage you, we cannot go but we cannot say our African heritage that doesn't make sense Africa is a continent not a country so <laughs> we don't I don't know if I'm from Ghana or from Kenya or from South Africa I don't know so I, I, I have a break in my lineage and but all I can celebrate is I know my family is Jamaican so I can celebrate Jamaican culture and I can celebrate African American culture as I was born here but I can't go and really fully understand the breadth of my history so this is just a nice moment in time to celebrate what we do know but it is a partial picture of the of the whole thing that we have and so anyone who has a takes offense to that really think about what you're taking offense to okay that's that's a great point you make (laughs) thank you i like that because there's too many people that again Mm -hmm. think like this they think that Mm. Just because a marginalized community gets highlighted, it diminishes their community, which mm. is highlighted in everyday news Existence, and history, yes. media, everything. And it's like everything is from. Are you kidding from me? That <laughs> you know, you, yeah, you know, your culture gets talked about. I like, mean, don't don't play around like that. Look at the, the dominance of industries. I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. It's, you're pervasive throughout media. So, I mean, if that's not enough, then I don't. I mean, what else do you want, really? We have like, to have some. We have to have something, guys. We, we can't. Yeah. Yeah. And like I, and like you said, we've been our history's been broken, broken. so mm. it's good to highlight just what even our American history just yes. to have that just at least some something type of celebration. Yeah, so I think it's, it hurts. People don't understand how how hurtful it is to walk around not knowing who you are because. If you are German, if you are if you are uh, from the UK, if you are from the Netherlands, you know who you are. You know how hard that is for African Americans to not know. You don't know who you are. 
Because there's don't. people that they can freaking they they they're able to tell you yeah. when their like great great grandparents came yeah. to America. We can't even we say don't any of that, right? Know. We, like, <laughs> and you know it's funny we don't even know when we were here because yes. technically some of us may have not even been, been connected the, to the yeah, slaves the at all. Yeah, yeah, they may have came, they may have migrated here way, at some yeah. other point. So that's the thing. Like we it's all so have painful. different. It's so painful. It's so painful. We all have different connections, and we're not even sure. And and the phrase like how can you go forward if you don't know your past? Well, think about that contextually for a group of people. Then <laughs> how how are we expected to thrive in the future when so much of our past is unknown to us from a genetic perspective and from a cultural and historical perspective. It is it is a, a, a hit and a hurt that we live with every single day. And people need to be considerate of that and 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 think outside of their own bias and their own contextual box of their nice. culture. Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully people can listen to this and, and say, you know what, that is true. Or, oh, let me think about this a little bit more. Because, again celebration of one culture is not the diminishing of others. We want all people to feel good about who they are, but this is a time to celebrate black people in some way, some way, some form, some manner, because there, there's a lot of hurt that we go through on a daily basis. Can we, can, can we have 28 days of love and celebration, please? Can we? Thank and we you. should be appreciated as a vital part of yes. American history, right? Black America would not be here without American black. History. History. <laughs> yeah, without us. America would not be here without the 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 literal destruction of our community on this land. Yeah. So can we can we please take a moment and honor and celebrate the sacrifice that was made? Because that is a sacrifice that not other communities can even speak to. But with that, guys, we are at that time again. It is coming to the end of our 179th episode of. Welcome to This was quite the episode nice. discussing 10 things you should know about black history. If you miss any of it, you can rewind and listen again and really take notes if you feel like it. But I think that you, we think that you should enjoy this and uh, hopefully be surprised by some of the things you heard. Now, will we leave you hanging for what our next episode will be about? Drum roll, please. On our next episode, we will be discussing... Why is GameStop so hot? Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please submit a topic for an upcoming episode on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. So that is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. We're super active on social media, like I mentioned earlier. Hit us up, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, guys, it, we're all there at Woken Free. And then, of course, any collaborations, any sponsorships, any of that jazz, contact us page at WokenFree.com. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time. Happy Black History Month, y'all.